In this video we're going to talk about Hunter Douglas blinds. So we have four of the Silhouette Halo blinds in this room and they're hardwired into the uh, home and then upstairs in the bedrooms and one bath we have the Bonsoir blinds in there. So these are I think uh, four inch blinds here and we decide to go this route. We'll take a, a look at how they operate and all of that. We'll go over a bunch of different things that hopefully you find useful. So we have, like I said, the hardwired in. We've got these uh, power view controllers here. I have the Pro Gateway in the basement, which is supposedly allow you to use the app off of the property. And what I found is that it doesn't work as great unless maybe you have a gateway in every room. So, um, like. Right here you see when window blind is closed. I did that through the app telling it to close the whole room in one shot. And that's what we got. Meh, not so great. We'll go, so with this, when they're specking out the blinds, they had a bit of difficulty with the uh, window operations. So with the halos, when they tilt around, they need more height in the bottom. So you'll see that this ends a little bit low on the window, which does not matter to me, but it could matter to somebody. So you could make some trim and kind of blank off the bottom of the window if you felt that was necessary. Or you could just leave it be, right? Like you could tuck something in. Nice little piece of wood across there, about an inch or so, and that would uh, work pretty good. So what we'll do now is we will run the system. So because this you have it, I have a program for all in the room right now. So every time you move this, it lights up briefly. It's got a coin cell battery in it. So I've got them programmed for one, two, three, four across the room. I just use the all button. So I just do an open. And when you order these, you'll tell the uh, factory that they're all in the same room together and they need to be calibrated together. And uh, you'll see a very great benefit from doing that. So when I trimmed out this room, I did make sure with a laser I, that I had all of the uh, trims starting at the same height. Like I shot a laser around the room and for a benchmark so that uh, all the blinds are hanging from the same position. So now I'll do a close. And that remote is very reliable, it always works. So just buy a remote for every room and plan to use that. I don't know why there's an issue because like I have had the gateway set up to open and close these windows on sunset and sunrise. And that was working great, but trying to use the uh, remote on its own, or sorry, the app on its own wasn't so good. So schedules are reliable, but the app on its own is not. So you'll see that all the windows come down a bit short. You couldn't have some coming down longer than others. It just doesn't really work that way from a fabrication perspective. So with these here, I think this is like a two and a half inch return right there with the four inch blind. So that's good. So now we can do a uh, tilt. So you can hit open. Actually, sorry. That's a good point. So you can, if you do something, if you press stop, they will all stop together. So I'll close them. So you can press the uh, tilt button here. So it's lowering down and closer. So it's uh, tilted so you can see out and still get some light. So that's nice. So that's sort of how the halos work. You can adjust how much they're tilted. Although I haven't really played around with that too much, to be completely honest. So 
So there's like a little brush to keep the light from coming in on the top and it's gray. Don't know why. That's what they decided to use. You think it would match uh, something on the blind, perhaps. So now we'll open all the way. We'll just pop outside for a second. I wired these window frames for Lutron blinds, but they wouldn't sell the ones I wanted in Canada. There's some child safety things that are quite important. So you can't buy Lutron blinds for Canada in a lot of cases. So we ended up going with the Hunter Douglas and they dropped the wire in from the right hand side instead of the left. So we'll take a, a peek at that from outside because you can see the wiring from outside the home. And you could conceal it. Like I've only put these up kind of temporarily. I gotta take them all down and paint them. So I kept the plastic bags so that clean up your hands, put on some clean gloves and rebag these things. So this is the uh, outside. You can see the connector right here. Normally that should be all you'd see. You just drill a hole and pop down here, but I had to run the wire from one side to the other. But just to give you an idea, so I used some zip ties and kind of grabbed the wire on the bracket. And I could cover it up better later if I uh, decide to. Unsure at this point. Depends how much motivation I have when the time comes. So that's the uh, Halo silhouettes. You can get them with a roller behind them if you want to do a blackout. And like with Hunter Douglas, they have any option you want, depending on what kind of millionaire you are. <laughs> but for the, uh, these things are expensive. I just say that. And we didn't anticipate spending this much money on it, so it prevented us from doing a, uh, a renovation in the kitchen. We were gonna get the kitchen refaced with new doors and uh, different wood on everything was the same price between the blinds like seven blinds or refacing this kitchen same price so we'll pop upstairs here and we'll take a look at uh, the bonsoir blinds I just look at one room it's just set up for storage right now because I'm doing renovations I just got everything jammed in here so in this room here I shall turn off the lights. You may or may not see some imperfections on the edges of these blinds. And they're not blackout either. And uh, again, with the style of window, for it, we, had, we have to uh, stop just uh, shy of the uh, lever for actuating it. So I'm going to close the door. So here we are, no sources of light in this room. And it's still twilight in here. So these again, they're not blackout like I mentioned. You could get another roller on them and uh, be able to have a blackout in the back if that's what you needed. For me, it's not really necessary. These are guest rooms and it's not like a super bright location. We do have one street light across the road, but this we found was adequate for our needs. But don't think that the Bonsoirs with the uh, backing is going to be um, by any means uh, a blackout. It's not. So they kind of torque themselves down pretty tight when they're done closing. There is a, uh, a button for like manually controlling them up in there. I think, I haven't really played with it, but I believe that there is a way of manually operating it if you lost your remote for some reason. We got one of these for each room's room. And then for our bathroom, we got a uh, wall mount for that puck. So um, again, these are very shallow returns here these are like inch and a quarter I think and these blinds I think they were like two inch or three inch I'm not sure but it sticks out a bit 
if you wanted, you could face mount the blinds too, but then and that would kind of resolve some of your issues with the uh, hardware, but we chose to go uh, recessed mount in this case. So you can see there's one light across the road over there. But uh, we're happy with them. They're expensive. And so there's uh, two ways you can power the blinds with hardwire. So you can get like a... The non-hardwired versions would be you would uh, have a battery pendant attached to the device and that would work okay. You just have to replace the batteries at times. You need to buy them in bulk. And we want, weren't sure, how, we just didn't want to mess with the batteries. And it's probably the same price with batteries or hardwired or whatever, depending if, if you're handy and you can run the wiring. So I had to run wiring down, like I had to take the trim out because you're not going to put new blinds on old trim because it's expensive to replace the trim like this trim each piece is like hundred and thirty dollars for a, a 16 foot length and there's a lot of wood in there by the time you get done so you got like five hundred to a thousand dollars worth of trim around each window you're not gonna wanna go and buy a thousand dollar blind and have to redo the trim so just do them together and then that gives you an opportunity to put in the wiring. So here I ran it down into the wall and then when I put in the baseboard trim, before I did that I cut a hole and went out and into the uh, soffit here and had to work my way across the house. So you end up running like 18 gauge 10 conductor wire throughout your house. It's quite a bit of work. A bunch of joggers are going by. And it's worth it in my mind. Otherwise, you have to run a wire down and like plug it into the, the wall. And it's not quite as tidy. That's a, a start. Like if you can't afford to do it all in one shot, these actually came with a little wall power supply with every single one of them. I got them all thrown in the corner there and they come with like a six inch cable or something silly. So they're completely useless. But you, get them out of the box, you can test them if need be. That's how they show up. They actually show up quite well packaged. There's going to be a bunch of boxes. You'll have a truckload of boxes to take away when you're done. So they come with all the paperwork and the specs on them. Yeah, so it's a three inch bonsoir that we put in here. I think they make the bonsoirs in Alberta and they make the uh, halos in Mexico, if that makes any sense. I think that's what I kind of discovered. So now the last part is if you're going to hardwire them all and you want them all going to the same place you need to get a power supply. So I ended up buying a power supply off of eBay and putting it in my electrical area. And so we'll just zip down through the house and take a look at that. So this stuff is super expensive so it, and it's all custom for the most part. The only thing that's not custom are the power supplies. So you can buy them off the internet at a fraction of the cost. So normally it's like over a thousand dollars for one of these things. You can see I have an opportunity to redecorate down here as well. So that's a Hunter Douglas power supply here. And it's good for 16 blinds so I've got six of them hooked up right now and then the seventh one is kind of ready to go I just need to install it and pardon me here I would recommend getting the Hunter Douglas model because it's actually using good power supplies that are actually legal for use in like North America unlike the junk you find on Amazon so if you can get one of these off of uh eBay for a few hundred dollars, that's the way to go. This is the uh, two-wire version, and you can see when I ran them, they're all calibrated quite well together. You can get a four-wire power supply where you've got four wires per blind, and those ones you can do some more trick things 
with the blinds. Like if you have different length blinds and you want them all to end at the same time, you would use one of those. But at that point, you'd better be better off having a Hunter Douglas company figure all that out and own the responsibility of making that work correctly. But from a DIY perspective, I was quite happy with uh, this. And then I got, like I said, the uh, 10 conductor 18. And this is uh, CUL rated wire for plenum. So it's good and safe, you can use it anywhere. And you don't have like a, a nest of wires coming back here. So that's what I decided to do. So I thought I'd share this with you. Hopefully you found it interesting and thank you for watching.